And without further ado, we have former WCW World Heavyweight Champion, best-selling author, motivational speaker, fitness guru, actor, Skull Bucket, mm. Diamond Dallas Page. How are you, Diamond Dallas? Unstoppable, bro. You are unstoppable. I just got my DDP yoga in the mail at the end of last week and getting started on it, and I'm very excited. So glad you're with us again, and we appreciate it. By chance, Dallas, did you get a chance to watch Raw this last Monday? Um, I saw the last half of it to when Daniel Bryant came out there. You know, I, I understand, since I've been watching wrestling for 45 years of my life now, that wrestling is very cyclical. You know, gimmicks come back from time to time. You know, I'm used to Bad News Brown back in the 80s, and I can deal with Bad News Barrett because they're putting a different twist on it. But when he comes up to the t the table, the announce table, and says, it's me, it's me, it's BNB, <laughs> I've got an issue with it, Dallas. I miss that one. It was bad uh, enough when it was bad enough when the road dog used to do that in the nineties. It's me, it's me, it's the D O double G, but now it's me, it's me, it's B N B. What do you uh, think of that? Is that God. is that the best form of flattery, Dallas, or does that kind of stuff annoy you to no end? No, man, I don't care. You know, if anything it uh it's um it's good press because people you know, first of all, Barrett's a hell of a talent. Yes he um, is. You know, really, I, I got a lot of respect for him uh, as far as <clears throat> his work in the ring, his his believability. Uh, you know, to me, he, he's a big star in that company, and he really could be top top guy. Um, so when, when I hear someone doing, you know, often imitated and then never duplicated, you know, I, I like that. You know, you know, I love that Randy Orton does, you know, the the, the RKO, and he put his own little twist on it. So. Uh, so to me, all that kind of stuff keeps uh, keeps people thinking, oh, my God, that DDP says that. Or when That's Booker right. used to go five times, five times, five times. <laughs> I did three times before, yeah. or, you know, two times, two times before anybody did anything. You know, so uh, I think it's, yeah, it's all good. All good. I love Thanks. Daniel Bryan's interview during the show. About that, yeah, you know, it definitely had something. He wasn't gonna, I was hoping he wasn't going to lay down that strap. You know, they got to. You know, if anything, bring it. You know, you do what uh, what the UFC would do, and you you bring an in, what's it called interim interim champions, and you know they 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 do a you know a, a tournament to see who's going to be the interim champion, and when Brian comes back, he goes against them. Yeah, I like that Whatever idea that too. Is. You know, I mean that's how that's how it's done in the in the, in the, in the real leagues. You know, Dallas, the cool thing is, is I'm, like I said, I'm old enough to remember your entire career. So I've seen you back in your AWA days. And most people who are listening to the show are well versed in the fact that you got started late in your 30s and became a champion in your early 40s. But I think a lot of the younger fans may not understand that you actually came in as a manager. You came into the AWA. You were brash, loud, obnoxious. But the funny thing is, is when I saw you for the first time, Dallas, I remember saying, you know what? This dude has got some personality. This dude has got some charisma. The AWA needs this badly. But why is he managing? He's bigger than Tanaka and Diamond. <laughs> yeah. Well, not just anybody can wrestle, man. You know, it, it took me years and years. When I finally made the debt, you know, put the dedication in and uh, decided I was going to do it. I mean, it just, you know, Michael P.S. Hayes, when I told him I was going to, you know, was done managing. I was going to start wrestling at 35 and a half. He, we were getting ready to go through the curtain in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and he literally fell down on his back, belly laughing. <laughs> you know, and later he would call me back. That was like 91. He called me back in 96 after I had a match with Sting that, uh, you know, I did the job for, but it was after 10 or 12 minutes. And Sting and I had a hell of a match. And he called me up. And my machine had gone to answer to the answering machine back when everybody had answering machines on their phones. <laughs> and uh, I could hear him, hey, play ass. I just want to say, and I pick up the phone, hey, Mike, it's me. He's like, son of a bitch, God damn, man, <laughs> mother, fuck. I go, dude, you okay? What's the matter? He goes, hey, you know how sometimes you still want someone to pick up the fucking phone? I go, yeah. He goes, he goes, that's what this was. I go, you want me to hang up and see me with a message? He's like, damn it, fuck it. <laughs> he goes, I got to tell you, he said, never. 
if I've been as happy to eat crow as I am today, he goes, Paige, you killed it. That match you had with Sting last night, just want you to know, whenever you're ready to come up here, you got a red carpet all the way up. They're all talking about you today. So that, that, that was pretty cool.